Hey guys, six months have passed us by since I purchased the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro and I have easily accumulated over 20 cooks using it. But what have we learned over these last six months? What are the smokers' strong points and where is there room for improvement? Well, we'll get to that, but first let's start with our pork butt prep. Hey guys, how you guys doing? Glad that you're here. Today, of course, as you've seen, uh, we are doing a pork butt. We are doing some pulled pork and uh, we have about a six pound pork butt. It's a 5.92 to be exact. So let's go ahead and get it open and then uh, season it. This is a boneless pork butt. I do prefer doing these because uh, it's just easier. It doesn't have much of a fat cap. Usually when it has a fat cap, I like to score it, but this one doesn't really have one. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, all this fatty tags here will actually turn into like tasty chicharrones and mixes well with the pulled pork. And today I am using Texas's very own Suckle Busters. This is a honey barbecue rub and you can use it on chicken or pork. Today of course we are using it on pork. But of course this is the six month review of uh, the camp ship and it's hard to believe that six months have gone by really quick. So today we'll be talking about the pros and cons of owning a smoker like the uh, Woodwind Pro. Uh, I will tell you some of the things that I really like, and some of the things that I really don't like uh, of this smoker and what I've learned over these past six months of using it. So I thought I'd share a pork butt cook with you guys. Uh, so yeah, let's get the uh, pork butt wrapped up and then let's head to the uh, smoker and get that ready. So a good cook always starts with a good choice of meat followed by a good choice of wood. Make sure you're totally happy with the pellets you choose. I mostly use Bear Mountain Gourmet Blend, but today we are using their sweet barbecue blend. We start with a temp of 300 degrees Fahrenheit and a smoke setting of 10. The first two hours of a long cook on the Cam Chef are the most critical in establishing a good bark. Setting a water pan directly underneath your meat will keep it moist and minimize the need for spritzing, allowing you to concentrate more on the bark. I found that wood chips followed by wood chunks on top is the quickest way to get your smoke box smoking. This will last you about 30 minutes, so remember to keep this up for the first two hours. And for the first time, I will be using one of the meat probes that came with the smoker. I've always relied on the handheld Thermal Pro TP19H to keep an eye on the meat temps, but we'll use this as a quick temp reference. Another thing I should point out is that I never use the Wi-Fi app for the smoker since my barbecue shack is too far away from my router. I'm okay with that though, since I'd rather keep things simple. Uh, two hours into the cook guys, we're getting a nice color, but I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that back side to the front. And as you notice, this side was on the, facing the wall, so you see how it has more color. To keep the bark even on the pork butt, I'm going to spritz the side that was facing the wall to allow the other side to catch up to the same color. And today I'm just using plain old water as a spritz. Three hour mark guys, and we're looking like we're getting a lot of color in there. I refilled the smoke box up to the three hour mark on this one. From here on out, we'll let the pellets finish the bark. I also had to turn down the temp to 250 degrees since I had to run an errand. We're at 160, we're gonna look at the bark and if it looks good, we'll wrap it. It's looking great, but I think I can get it darker. The benefit of working on the bark for the first two to three hours is that you get to write out the rest of the cook and let the pellet smoker finish off the bark. This is where this smoker really shines. And here's a quick shot of my sticker board. If you want your sticker up here, shoot me an email. And so we reached the six hour mark and the pork butt has reached 180 degrees Fahrenheit. The bark looks fantastic. I think it's time to wrap. We are gonna use pink butcher paper to wrap. To keep the meat moist, we're going to use some of the water and meat drippings from the water pan. About six ounces of that in total. I bump up the temp to 300 and place back the wrapped pork butt on the lower rack. A minor mistake on my part and I'll explain in a bit why. Seven and a half hours total cook time. The pork butt is probing tender and we hit 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to put the smoke in shutdown mode and allow the meat to rest. Homemade coleslaw and pickled red onions. Everybody is ready to dig in. Let's open up the pork butt. 
here's my mistake I was talking about. Using the lower rack made the meat stick to the butcher paper. So on your long cooks, you always want to use the upper rack where the water panned underneath as a heat deflector. Now look how beautifully this pork butt shreds. Nice looking smoke ring all around and look at the bits of bark in between every bite full. All right, time to make us a sandwich with everything on it, of course. Pickles, red onions, and coleslaw. What a beautiful combination. All nicely stacked for me to take a bite. And so I hope you enjoyed the cook and some of the tips I've learned using the smoker these past six months. Let's move on to the final six month review. Let's start with the cons and dislikes of the smoker. We'll address the pros and cons of the smoke box itself at the very end. So one of the trade-offs for having a smoke box feature is that there is no sear function on the Woodwind Pro since the smoke box is directly over the fire pot. This is easily resolved though if you buy the Sidekick gear attachment, but of course that means an extra 300 bucks that you'll have to dish out. Moving on to the next con, some owners have reported having Wi-Fi connection and firmware issues. Most of these issues have been resolved by either uninstalling then reinstalling the Camp Chef Wi-Fi app or buying and installing a Wi-Fi extender. Some owners have gone as far as ordering an antenna off of Amazon and installing it onto the controller board. Either way, the issues can be resolved with just a little time and effort. And finally, the last of the cons and dislikes before we move on to the pros is the lack of an exclusive cover for the Woodwind Pro. Not really a big issue, but if you're like me, then you're going to want to protect your investment. Camp Chef does offer a cover on their website, but it's a universal one and it is rather pricey. Now, I just went on Amazon and bought a universal one for much cheaper and I haven't had any issues with it. Link for this in the video description. Now let's move on to the pros and strong points and likes. Ever since the Woodwind Pro came onto the barbecue scene, it's been causing a buzz because of its smoke box feature. But there are other strong points as well, like its large hopper capacity that easily fits a 20 pound bag of pellets. Great for those long cooks so you won't have to worry about refilling halfway through the cook. Another strong point is the ease of cleanup. Instead of hauling the shop vac out, simply pull out the ash clean out knob on the side of the grill and it empties into a cup at the bottom of the grill where it can be removed and discarded within seconds. Now the total rack space is another strong point of the Woodwind Pro 36. It has a whooping 1236 square inches of cooking space, easily fitting four briskets. Another great feature is the smoke setting feature. You can actually dial in the smoke setting from 1 to 10 as long as you're cooking under 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This dial in smoke feature is rarely seen in pellet smokers today. And finally we get to the smoke box feature. There are much more pros to this feature than cons, so the pros first. The smoke box feature opens up a world of many possibilities, like using a stronger flavored wood pellet in the hopper such as hickory pellets and mixing a milder flavored wood like apple wood chips or apple wood chunks in the smoke box to get a great flavor profile, limited only to your imagination. Think about the flavor profile you are after and go to work with that smoke box. Another pro worth mentioning is that you can pretty much get a great bark in the first two hours using the smoke box. I haven't seen any other pellet grill do that. Now with the smoke box feature comes one con. Now if you are not careful when you're sliding the smoke box in and out, you can actually cause the smoke box cover to misalign. If that happens, you won't be able to open the valve to get your wood ignited. My suggestion to Camp Chef would be to install some kind of lock latches to the side of the smoke box in future versions of the Woodwind Pro to prevent this from happening. Well guys, that's pretty much it. In the last six months, I have really enjoyed using this smoker. It is one of 12 grills that I own and it pretty much gets the most use. Camp Chef has done very well selling this smoker as it has been sold out on their website and other vendor websites up until a few days ago. This can only mean that there will be future updates to its firmware and support hopefully. Well guys, I hope that this week and weekend finds you all guys and gals doing well. Just want to mention that I do host a live chat just about every other Tuesday around 6.30 Central Standard Time on my channel. We chat about barbecue and do a few giveaways. Stop on by if you guys get a chance. That's all for now, so until next time, take care of yourself and each other. See you on the next one.